Fifteen years ago, I visited St. Louis. I went to visit Wash U, which was the birthplace of the Cox Mays procedure. And uh, James Cox had been chair there forever, and then Ralph Damiano uh, took over, and Ralph had become probably the most current iconic figure in the treatment of atrial fibrillation. I spent time with him. I learned about the methodology, which he had evolved then into what we call the Cox Maze 4, which was a means of taking an operation that was cut and sew and complex and simplifying it, making it expeditious and effective. I did become very passionate about it at that point because I recognized that we had the opportunity to uh, take away from a patient the dramatic risk that was associated with their atrial fibrillation. So the risk of stroke, the risk of the continued arrhythmia, the risk of the continued changes in the muscle of their heart, the risk of their heart muscle, their lower chambers suffering from their upper chambers not working properly, the years of life that they would lose. So here I recognized this opportunity and, uh, and then when we went into action with it, we collected data from day one. For the last 12 years, I have rigorous follow-up on every patient that I've done that operation on for the rest of their lives. So I've been able to materialize for myself what has happened for those patients. I've been able to identify the fact not only that they're staying alive, but they're staying well and they're staying in rhythm. There were always a lot of naysayers about that, whether you could actually achieve that. Could you keep people in rhythm? Uh, was it going to be isolated just to these few academic centers that had invested so many years in it. Well, the truth of it was that if you were trained by the right people, then you could do it well and you could achieve those same results. Knowing that, I became a trainer. So for the past, really for the past 10 years, and in some degree, I've been involved in the education. In the last seven or eight years, I've been immersed in the education. And now I've trained hundreds of surgeons and I love that. They get excited like I get excited. They take it home and they do the procedure and then they call me and they tell me about their results. They also ask me questions. How do they manage the arrhythmias that come at the time? What do you do to make sure that the patient does well? And we have formulated entire lines of thought with respect to that. We're seeing it become essentially democratized so that any patient anywhere, in theory, will have the opportunity to, without looking too far, to find someone that can offer them that complete operation. So that's why it's important to me.